We're moving to or relocating to another area of the country. Everybody always talks about what all the good things are. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the seven worst things of living in the Winston-Salem area of North Carolina. So stay tuned. My name is Kristen Brown and I'm a realtor with eXp Realty. If this is your first time to my channel, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and tap on the notification bell. That way you're notified the next time I put out a video. I get calls, texts, and emails from people who are moving here or relocating here every day and I absolutely love it. If you are thinking about moving or relocating to anywhere in the triad area of North Carolina, make sure you give me a call, send me a text, or shoot me an email. I got you covered when moving to the triad area of North Carolina. So in this video, I'm going to discuss, in my perspective, the seven worst things about living in the Winston-Salem area of North Carolina. Number seven on the list is the streets are not set up in a grid. And what I mean by that is they're not set up like as an H or as a T. They're all kind of like squiggly and they're all like a half moon. And you can really see on the map, which I'm going to zoom to right now, how this city grew over time. So it wasn't something that looks like it was really well planned out. So for example, in Florida, Florida's on the newer side with everybody moving down there and cars and all of that. And it seems like in Naples, for example, everything is set up on like this H grid, so to speak. So you can drive literally, if you take a right anywhere, go to the next stoplight, take a right, go to the next stoplight, take a look right and so on. You'll eventually end up to where you started. If you try to do that here in Winston-Salem, and try to do it without GPS, you might end up in Tennessee, Virginia, Georgia, maybe over on the coast, maybe over in the mountains, because as you're driving along, not only are the streets not set up in a grid, they also change names. So you might cross over an intersection and now there's a different name. And you're thinking to yourself, well, what happened? But if you're from the Northeast, then you're used to this kind of thing. As we know in the Northeast, that's an older area of the country and things changed over time maybe things grew faster than they were able to accommodate for whatever reason and it's basically the same here so that's something that some people depending on where they're moving from will have to get used to number six on the list is there's no pro football or no pro basketball teams in winston-salem you have to go to charlotte for that in charlotte the pro football team is the carolina panthers and the basketball team is the hornets so if you want to see any pro games live you got to get in the car and drive to charlotte to be able to see the Panthers or the Hornets play. That being said, we do have several universities within North Carolina that has college football. That's a huge thing here in North Carolina, being part of the Mid-Atlantic. Since we don't have a pro football team in Winston-Salem or basketball for that matter, we do have universities where you can get that same football fix, but it's not going to be obviously a pro team, it's going to be a university team. So if that's something that you absolutely cannot live without because there's not a pro football or a pro basketball team in Winston-Salem, then Winston-Salem will not be for you. Also, there's no pro baseball team, but there is a minor league team called the Winston-Salem Dash, and over in Greensboro is the Greensboro Grasshoppers. So at least if you wanted to get a baseball fix during the summer, then you could go check out one of their games. There will be maybe a smaller stadium than what you're used to, but at least you'll be able to see something like on the minor league level versus the pro level. Also, you might find that it might be a little bit more fun to go to a minor league game, and it's also mo more affordable. The tickets are only about $30 each at the time of this recording, which is spring 2023. So it might change whenever you find this video. Just keep that in mind. And you can still have fun. It's just a minor league team instead of a pro baseball team. Number five on the list is the colleges and universities here. And you're probably thinking, whoa, wait a minute here. You know, colleges and universities are a good thing, right? Yeah, they are a good thing. We have Wake Forest University, Carolina University, Forsyth Technical College, Winston-Salem State University. Salem College and Carolina University. But with all of those college age students, that usually comes with parties, right? So if you're looking for peace and quiet and not any kind of hustle bustle, any kind of possibly parties going on, that's maybe around the block from where you live, 
that might be something that could be a deal breaker for you. The flip side, though, to that is that having those universities and colleges here can open up more opportunities for those who aren't in college or university anymore. Maybe you already graduated and there might be a class that you want to take or maybe some new skill that you want to learn. But a con could be that around those universities and colleges, you might find that there is really no housing available because the college students have taken it all. Your next door neighbors might be four college students sharing one house, for example. So if you're looking for being around professionals and not college age students, if you do, that's great, but you may not ever be able to get away from the students having fun and, and having big parties on the weekends and whatnot. For example, I was working with a client who really wanted to make sure that she was not going to be in any type of neighborhood that was too close to one of those universities for the very same reason, because she has a very important job. She needs to make sure that she gets her sleep. And on the weekends, she has to do homework, so to speak, for herself, for her her job. And so she wanted to make sure she was in an area of the city that wasn't going to be constantly having parties Thursday night through Sunday afternoon, because that was her time to do whatever work she needed to do for her job to be able to prepare for the next week. This is one of the reasons you need to call me if you are thinking about moving to or relocating to the Winston-Salem area of North Carolina, so you don't end up in the wrong place. Number four on the list is there are no real bike trails or bike lanes. If you enjoy riding your bike long distances, Winston-Salem may not be a good fit for you. Let's take a look at the map. This is the Winston-Salem urban area bicycle map. So I'm just going to scroll down here. I will also put a link to this PDF file in the first pinned comment. But if we zoom in a little bit, you can see that Blue means the roads are rated more suitable for bicycling. So you can see that they do exist, but when we look at the orange and red, there are a lot more orange and red, meaning moderately suitable or less suitable, according to the Winston-Salem urban area bicycle map. And over here in Clemens is where Tanglewood Park is. And there is a 700 mile trail called Mountain to Sea that starts in the lower corner of North Carolina that goes all the way through to the Atlantic Ocean. And it passes through Tanglewood Park in Clemens, which is an 1100 acre park. But it is a share the road and it's not like any kind of bicycle lanes that are designated for bicycles. You have to share the road with other cars. Number three on the list is there's no 100% gluten-free restaurant. Of course, you can find things to order online or you can find things to order at the restaurant. There's also an app to be able to know which restaurants do offer gluten-free items, but it would just be nice to have a restaurant that was 100% gluten-free. So when you walked in the door, you wouldn't have to look for that little GF anywhere on the menu. You just knew everything was going to be gluten-free. For example, when my husband, mother-in-law, and I went to Barcelona for vacation in August of 2019, we found this great 100% gluten-free restaurant. It's called Enville. And I'm probably saying it wrong. I'm not pronouncing it how they would pronounce it over there. But it was awesome to be able to walk into the restaurant and not have to worry that what items are gluten-free and what items were not gluten-free. So my husband has to eat gluten-free and this is always a sticking point with us because we always have to look up on the menu online before we even go and try a restaurant to make sure there's something else that he can eat besides salad and have that gluten-free option available. Number two on the list is the weather. So the weather here changes really frequently and it's really important to wear layers. And maybe that's not your scene where you wanna wear a t-shirt and then some kind of like cardigan on top so that you're able to take the cardigan off when you need to. But here typically in the mornings, it's really, really cold. And then around maybe 10, 30, 11 is when it starts warming up. And by three o'clock in the afternoon, we might be already into shorts weather. So it's really just kind of crazy how we can go from 35 degrees in the morning to 75 or 80 in the afternoon. It doesn't happen all the time, but something that I've noticed that's been happening frequently this year, I'm not sure if it's a weather pattern change or what. Also, again, I don't know if it's a weather pattern change or something that's 
going to be the new norm is that we've been getting a ton of rain lately. So this past winter, we didn't get any snow. We didn't even have a dusting, nothing, all rain. And lately it seems like it's been raining at least once a week and we get a lot of rain. That being said, at least we have a lot of greenery, which is really nice, all this green all over the place. But also with that greenery, comes all the pollen. And for the first time since I've been living here for about three years now, I've had really, really bad allergies this week. I think I might've had a sinus infection. I'm not sure. I went ahead and thought that I nipped it in the bud, but now I can tell like my voice is a little raspy and I just feel like kind of like my ears are plugged up and my nose might be a little bit stuffed up. So I'm really looking forward to spring being over so that we can move into summer and not have to deal with all this pollen and allergies. Then when you come into the summertime, summer is interesting because we have cooler nights, probably like around 60 to 70 degrees, which is really nice. But during the day, it can get really, really hot. The nice part about it is that whatever type of weather that we're having, it doesn't last for very long. So whether it's nice weather, it's not going to last for very long, but also if we're having really stinky weather, bad weather, lots of humidity, lots of rain, won't be a lot of snow, but unless you're up in the mountains, you can guarantee that the weather's going to change very soon. And one of the jokes that my mom likes to make is that if you stand outside and wait five minutes, the weather's going to change. (laughs) Maybe you need to have it rain all the time, whatever it is, then this may not be the place for you. We still have four seasons and One season may be shorter than another, just depending on what weather pattern we're in globally. Number one on the list is Winston-Salem does not have great public transportation. Do they have public transportation? Yes. But is it going to be like New York City, Washington, D.C., or Boston, or Chicago? No. Maybe one of these days we will. Siemens is moving into Lexington, hopefully in about a year and a half, and they um, build or assemble locomotives. So maybe they'll do some kind of prototype or something. I'm just really wishing. And so if anyone with Siemens is watching this video, maybe you can mention it to your CEO or something. I'm just joking, just kind of getting off topic. Um, But we don't have any kind of like train system or subway system like you would find in like Washington, D.C., New York, Chicago, or Boston. It just doesn't exist. Maybe one of these days we will have high-speed rail. It'd be really, really nice. But for now, we don't. This would be something that would be completely different here. So Winston-Salem may not be a good fit for you just based on a different need to get yourself from point A to point B. So that about wraps it up for the seven worst things about living in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Please give me a thumbs up and be sure you tap on the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so that you are notified the next time I put out a video. Until next time, I'll catch you later.